What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Eurythmics, and we're back for the final tune on their 1986 album, Revenge. Once again, big shout out to Philip for sharing this. And the final tune is called I Remember You, which I believe I've reacted to a rock set tune of the same name. The essence of the phrase is that you're referring to something in the past, that a person is no longer present in your life, whether constantly or frequently or even periodically. The idea is that the connection, the relationship, or the um, association is no longer. So yeah, given the nature of the larger album, given the way a couple of the songs, as I've um, come to understand, are more or less direct shots at Andy's ex-husband, I wouldn't be surprised if the remembering here is less than fully positive and is perhaps more withering and critical. Either way, let's find out what it is. This is I Remember You, the final track on the Rhythmics album Revenge, 1986. <laughs> Street musician, maybe? but also a jazzy touch with that sax.
my only complaint is that the, the fade at the end seems very Cliff-esque. Uh, yeah, a really cool tune, one with symphonic and in particular string elements. It felt like there was some cellos in there. You know, it seems like in different deep dives, sometimes like, oh, it's probably a, you know, a synth uh, string, and then it ends up like actually being real strings, and other times I think it might be a real sax, but it's a synth sax, so... Um, not sure about the full composition. My estimation, my um, hypothesis would be um, that it would be uh, a keyboard-based string uh, composition. But either way, I really love that symphonic um, pop sound. Annie's voice, just incredible, especially toward the end. It felt like she was, you know, putting more variation and accents on the, the lines that she kept running through. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it, it didn't feel um, withering or critical, but it felt complicated, you know, not just I remember you fondly so wonderfully, but, you know, if someone's in the, what was it, the wreckage of broken dreams, um, then maybe, and again, if the constant refrain is that you were both so young and you had didn't realize quite what you had done, maybe it was you did get married too early and like, oh shoot, maybe we're not as compatible as we thought. So maybe it's her being a little more sympathetic. Now again, it might not be about her ex-husband whatsoever, but if it was, then it would feel like maybe the album ends with a, like coming to terms or coming to peace a little bit more that, you know, this might have been, um, you know, both sides that caused the split. This might have been, you know, something where we just didn't realize what we had done until it was too late, but um, yeah, ultimately, it, it sounded complicated emotionally, but not, um, you know, angry or uh, dismissive, but instead um, almost regretful or at the, the very least um, reflective in a more nuanced way. So, um, yeah, but sonically really loved it. And again, I could hear Annie sing anything. Uh, so yeah, I assume there's at least, oh, I know for sure, there's, I think there's like four or five bonus tunes in the folder, so a little bit more to go through. I don't remember exactly what comes after that, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you think of this uh, album closing track. I am always curious the way records begin and end and choices that are made about chronology and, you know, why a tune might be picked to be the final track and... Um, you know, the atmosphere of this tune was certainly, you know, something special that my brain is, like, currently digesting. So, on that grounds alone, and perhaps, as I said, uh, conceptually or lyrically, maybe it's a bit more conciliatory and therefore um, is a nice counterpoint ending to an album that can be more caustic. Uh, in any case, let me know what you think. I will see you next time. Peace.